Welcome back to my solo tactician slaughter fest. Last time on my run, I slayed the likes of green Naruto, forged a suit of armor into a corpse, and killed the last of its species with this giant spider. I made my way through the lives of nearly everyone. Go ahead and watch it if you haven't. And for everyone who subscribed, I want to say thank you. I'm a small channel and I put a lot of work into these videos, so it means a lot. After the last video, a viewer made me realize that I had left something very important behind in the Underdark. So I backtrack to gain the favor of a false god and then slay them and their fishy followers. Oh, blessed Boal. Get welcomed into Act 2 with a friendly goblin greeter and meet up with some cult members. Hello, fellow cultist. It is I, other cult member. I believe in thing that cult is about very strongly. Get introduced to this disturbing drow. I'm going to be honest here. Is it bad that what I find most uncomfortable about him is that his eyes aren't symmetrical? And fixed it much better. Do some wandering and find some squatters sitting in this abandoned house and reflexively pull the trigger on my crossbow like five times. Wander back to the asymmetrical drow and take a quick guided tour to Universal Studios Moonrise Towers. I'm pretty sure this is the one that drops you from up high in the elevator. Get disappointed when all I find is an immortal daddy interrogating my one night stand. Decide to mind meld to help her out for now and tell these goblins to fight me. You're going to enjoy this, ain't ya? Yes. Yes, I am. Ask this lady to make her pet Knoll dance. And then tell the Knoll he's better than her. Have probably the most cordial conversation I've had this entire run with a murderous cat. <laughs> Have a nice chat about the meat in the walls. Meat sounds above then get my mind read and distract her with images of the last time I got laid. Go find Balthazar. <laughs> Wait, is that his real name? And delve into the prison. Get some deep gnomes waxing poetic while torturing my fling from last week. So I kill them to let them know that I am the one who gets to kill her. I'm possessive like that. Tell the highest density of delusional confidence I've ever seen that I'll help him out. And then on my way to perform a prison break, stumble upon a flesh dungeon. Gross. Yeah, don't mind me just shoving my full ass hands into these piles of fucking flesh. What if there's loot, bro? The things I do for loot. Cram my noggin with worms till it's bursting at the seams. That explains the bleeding ears. Break on through to the other side. Shoot the chains for the fastest prison escape on record. And sneak back around to see all the guards just kinda stand there at the boat kill all the prison guards. I just love it when they go invisible but stand in place. It's like they think I don't have object permanence. Have a bit of barstool banter with the best bartender in town. Bro is caked up. And drink him under the table. Or I guess all over the table. Cast this struggling actor as an extra in a horror film and do a deep clean of the bar for an upcoming health inspection. Walk in on a lecture on scalpels? Darkness? He seems a little off his rocker. Very off his rocker. Spare the students from PTSD from killing their professor, then clear out the town square. Had a new discovery here. If you sell unique items to a vendor before killing them, they just drop those items on death. It's a money printer. Have a conversation with the shiniest person I've ever seen. And that's saying something because I fought a literal suit of armor in a pool of lava. So the shiny bar is pretty high. Give her one gold piece and watch her explode when I call her greedy. Girl, you were literally made of gold. Thought you would be a little bit more self-aware about that one. On a side note, have you ever noticed that all of the major boss enemies in the town are all part of the Thorn family? Makes me wonder if Kethrick was like, yo, my main man Merkel, can you like bring back the whole fam while you're bringing back my daughter thanks get the most wholesome cutscene i'll get this entire run with my two favorite guys in the whole world just chilling he had a nightmare how cute i stopped getting those a long time ago buddy makes it easier to kill indiscriminately you know look the theater kid is standing outside this catacomb fucking weirdo have a quick foray into the weird underground dining hall that some mason built himself play a game of hide and seek with a kid and then absolutely dunk on him Dude, get fucking dunked on, kid. Imagine getting pickpocketed in a game of hide and seek. Destroyed this kid's whole career. And do some weeding at a nearby ruin. A lot of weeding. 
I mean, look at them. Thorm should have brought back a fucking groundskeeper. Save some sniveling harpers. Meet some guy who thinks I'm righteous. <laughs> oh, I spark with justice, eh? I mean, come on, bro, seriously. But yeah, sure, I'll help you torture this spirit. Sounds delightful. Head over to the local inn and... What? I'm not a bad guy, I promise. The worm is... Uh, circumstantial. I've got this tetrahedron with LEDs, see? I'm cool. Drink a truth serum. What's the worst I can tell her? That I murdered an entire camp of refugees, sided with the absolute. And still lie about protecting the inn. Maybe it's not a lie. Maybe my character thinks he's saving them from the struggles of living. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna help you. <laughs> have a run-in with the self-righteous gnome I helped earlier, getting the least sincere thank you I have ever received. Kill this guy just cause I don't like the way he's standing around and face no consequences? Nice. Thanks for the blessing, but I already have the pixie torture lamp. I prefer it, to be honest. I like the rattle. It's soothing. Take a detour into the basement and do some complimentary pest control. I mean, these bugs were getting out of hand down here. Maybe they'll comp my room for this. Head on back to he who is a guy with a raven to torture this spirit. I mean, bring justice to the spirit. Justice. That's what I said. Okay, ma'am? Watch this guy get possessed by a demon and tell the lady to stab herself. The power of piss compels you. The power of piss compels you. But he didn't like that I gave this spirit an arguably fair punishment, so I had to kill him. He forced my hand. There was nothing I could do. I wasn't going to kill him anyway or anything. So after a little casual exploration of the shadow-rich tundra, I clear out a local outbreak of measles and head on over to the notoriously well-traveled Thorm Catacombs. Bro, have you been standing here the entire time I've been exploring? You know, I look forward to killing you later. This behavior is a little pathetic. Like, come on. I have a literal puppy that is less dependent on my attention. Wait, wait, you've been sitting here practicing poetry for me? Ah, bro! So anyways, listen to the theater kid wax poetic about some old rival in the catacombs. What did this guy do to you, huh? Steal a lead role you wanted? Peruse the local catacombs filled with empty coffins because I'm pretty sure bro brought back the whole fam. Head on into a temple for the middle god of Thorm's fancy. Seriously, bro has gone through like three gods in this backstory, progressively worse and worse gods too. Anyway, put out some candles for the goth goddess, talk to the local rat population, guys are not very friendly for a bunch of squatters, and have a nice introduction with some skelly bros. Side note, how is this skeleton talking? It has no tongue. So fight some floating balls and make fun of the edgy goth kid. But before I do, gotta make sure I steal everything of value in the room. Mother dearest? Sure, why not? Wait, your name is actually Balthazar? Ah, you have this under control, huh? Yeah, that's why you're hiding in a room with one entrance 20 feet into the temple with an army of undead in front of you. For sure. Also, your diary said you were struggling. Yeah, I read it. It was pretty lame, not gonna lie. Thanks for the bell, bro. Wait, that's your brother? Actually, I think I see the resemblance. You and your mother are close, huh? Oh, sorry, man. She couldn't keep her hands, I mean herself, out of my pocket? Nah, I ain't giving her back. What a mama's boy. Mother thief! So I slay roast beef face and his whole posse, brother included. Looks like it's just you and me, mother dearest. I do not like the way that sounds. Sorry, it was just a fling, Miss Balthazar. You're on your own now. Ah! I'm genuinely curious at this point what happens when I get to the night song after having killed Balthazar already. Will he still show up? He drops all the items he normally does, so meet up with one of Raphael's theater kid friends, who is quite bad at singing. Leave none to hear it. Tell him I'll help him out, mostly because I want to see the slap fight those two get into if they meet again. Drama queens. I like this guy more, though. He made a skull cod piece. I can respect that. Still gonna kill him later, though. Out of respect. Respect. Take a silly little gander at Char's gauntlet. Hike through a haunted prison. <sighs> Dunk on my doppelganger, slink across some smoke platforms, and turn some dark Justicars into dead jesters before pressing this button and thunder, feel the thunder. instantly dying. I just got fucked up. On a real note, this part was much easier than I expected it to be. 
It seems that being alone actually makes it easier to do rather than harder. The sneak portion was easy since my sneak is crazy good. The fight was a cakewalk since it was essentially a 1v1. And the Justiciars aren't super powerful, so it was not bad. Claim my prize of this helmet and spear I will never use and head on back to Mr. Discount Demon. You know, Mr. Demon Guy, you'd be a lot more intimidating if you didn't bring like your whole ass crew out here. Kind of ruins the whole big powerful demon shtick. Anyway, I didn't want to risk him getting away if I didn't kill him before finishing the temple, so I'm going to go ahead and ruin his day. I don't know why enemies keep acting like this whole invisibility in place thing is going to do anything. You literally have a fat fucking blood stain on the ground where you're standing. It's kind of hard to miss. All right, you got me there. Clear out his whole entourage and their mascot, grab everything valuable like the little loot goblin I am, and bask in the glory of this big ol' spider carcass. Don't lick it, don't lick it, don't lick it, don't lick it, don't lick it. Fuck! Wait, it has like an aphrodisiac in it? Does that mean Mr. Discount Demon was using it? Who was he fucking? So head on over to a few of these secret spots below here and fall off mid-jump. Somehow. That's fine, my last save was probably... God damn it. So bring down the thunder on some theater, kids. And don't jump into the abyss this time. You'd think that goes unsaid. But look at me. Go ahead and drop my ball on the table and take the weirdest elevator down to another table. Girl, I know you're a goddess and all, but why not like require all the balls up front? Why you split my balls like this, girl? Whatever, slot my remaining balls into Char's holes and walk into a totally normal and not ominous hallway. Not ominous at all. Before I go ahead and take a quick skinny dip in Char's hot tub, I realize I should probably go work on The Last Light's namesake. So I fast travel on over there and get ready to sneak and slaughter before realizing the entire dome area is fully lit. You see, the reason a lot of Act 2 has been so easy at this point is because the entirety of this area is heavily obscured. And my sneaking is so good that people are Skyrim NPC walking into me without realizing I'm there. Oh, where'd he go? What was that noise? So safe to say, I was a bit worried about the Harpers. I decided to try and pick people off from the fringes, hoping that by the time a fight did start, I would have cleared out some of them. This is probably the worst I've felt about killing someone yet. These guys are mourning their dead comrade and don't even fight back. This is awful. Where's the fun in that? They're not even begging for mercy. This is straight terrible, dude. Why the fuck is there a boat on the roof? Something pretty funny happened here. When I killed Isabel, it played the cutscene like she had been kidnapped by the gargoyles, even though they had never showed up. Wait, what? So Last Light sees its last light, and Jahira is like, what the fuck happened, bro? I love that this is an option, by the way. And everyone turns into a shadow zombie thing. Jahira drops some fat spells all over the place. Damn, Jahira. And I thank her by standing crouched on top of a fountain. What? These guys are spooky. So anyway, teabag on the fountain until Jahira is dead and then slowly slaughter the remaining Harpers. Oh, and also these big old vines. I don't know why they're here, but whatever. So after I clear out the inn, I head on over to the overcompensation tower and do a little just in case exploring. Find and end some hungry gargoyles and decide I'm finally ready for that hot tub. Strip down and get ready for a hot tub hangout with a goddess and walk in like a man on a mission. Uh, this is actually pretty nice after all this killing. It might be a career I'm passionate about, but it's still work, you know? Get about five feet into my pool before getting hot tub time machined into this place. You know, I don't remember taking any drugs before this, but uh, it's kind of hard to argue against. So I reluctantly get dressed and leap my way past some spirits to the song lady. So here's where things get interesting. When you're alone, Dame Aelin is unkillable. The spear is useless and all killing her does is piss her off, which yes, is pretty hot, but she's not for the boys, she's for the girls. Anyway, I walk up and have a quick convo with the lovely lady in rags, tell her I'm gonna kill her, kill her, and then give up. You know, it just doesn't have the same appeal when they just keep getting back up, you know? So my only option seems to be releasing her, since I killed Balthazar. Side note, Balthazar is all like, killing me won't work, I'm above death, blah blah blah. 
and then he just goes and dies like anyone else really living up to that goth middle schooler image he has going for himself. So yeah, I literally have one option. Watch the eczema lady celebrate her freedom by punching the ground. I mean, I would probably lose it after 100 years in solitary too, so I guess it's reasonable. And I'm notoriously sane. Right, guys? Right? So I watch her show off her cool ass wings. Damn, I want some of those. Mourn her dead girlfriend that I had nothing to do with, I promise. Then head on over to help me slaughter some cultists. Fuck. I thought that if I killed everyone at the inn, these guys would all be alive since the assault starts on the bridge. But it looks like Dame Aelin was the one to kill all of them. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to share my murder, you know? Kind of a selfish slaughterer, if you will. So I reload before my hot tub trip and begin the mass polling of cultists. But like selfishly selfish murder as opposed to selfless murder so teabag my way through the phallic fortress accosting the cultist with my crossbow until all that's left is the undead daddy on the rooftop now i'm ready for that soak with char so i head on back over strip down and get sucked back into the cold springs huh i guess it wasn't the drugs this place is just crazy play the highest res frogger in existence hey girl one out no need to explain i got you also catherine killed your girlfriend Sick em, girl. Okay, I will say, although I missed out on a lot of quest stuff in this area because of all the ethical cleansing of the entire first act, it was all worth it for this moment. The moment when I walk into the titular tower for the epic final battle, and it's three dudes. Nice. So kill these guys while they literally just take it? You guys good? Well, I guess not you're dead. So before I go full send into fighting Kethrick, I'm going to take a quick long rest. You finally shipped, you what? Me that chance. What the fuck? I am so confused right now. Girl, you're supposed to be dead. Um, yeah, you can leave. Girl, just leave. Oh, the relic? Sure, take it. I don't give a fuck. Get back in the box! Okay, so that was weird. Finally prepared to take on Undead Daddy, head to his secluded brooding spot on the roof, and tell him his wife would be pissed. Yeah, I read his diary, what of it? That's right, feel bad. You suck, Catherick, and you should just off yourself. Oh shit, he's actually on his knees. This is fantastic. Wait, Damien, no, fuck, now he has the will to live, you dumbass. All right, this is the first part of Act 2 that has really been challenging so far. So let's just say I sincerely regret letting Spider Simp live because if you don't kill him before this, he is part of the fight. And let's just say... <coughs> I got slapped around. I ended up abusing potions a lot for this section, using a blood potion before the fight started to get an extra action each turn using speed potions as well. If I was a normal assassin, this would honestly be impossible since Dame Aelin yes. is basically useless. Can't blame the girl though. She's been atrophying for a hundred years in relative solitude. Also, I fucked up on saving when the fight started twice. Ended up having to climb to the top of Catherick's shaft two more times. Eh, shaft. Luckily, after my class changes at the end of last video, I get a pretty good first turn off each time. And the two shots per action combined with the free action that Assassin gives you at the start of combat, I get seven attacks off at the start of the fight, which is pretty absurd. After struggling for a bit, I ended up with a strategy of killing most of the skeletons and the summoner first, then focusing on Catherick to get him to scurry off like a little bitch. And by scurry, I mean summon Cthulhu and dunk on an immortal like an absolute badass. Then after the tentacle tyrant has run off, I take on the arachnid asshole like an absolute boss. And by absolute boss, I mean I ran away screaming like a little girl, shooting him with my bow while I do. <laughs> Why are you running? Why are and you let's running? just say, I left this fight fresh as a daisy. Now that that clusterfuck is over, I do what any sane person would do here and jump into the hole a giant fuck off tentacle just came through a few minutes ago. This is not the kind of flesh hole I thought I'd be jumping headfirst into today, if you catch my drift. Now that I've trust fallen into a pile of flesh, I embrace the gross and root through some nearby viscera, just in case. Oh yeah, stick my hands deep up in that viscera. Hey, you never know, could be something good in there. Open up the sphincter, binge murder some brains, chew through chop chop. 
and walk into this room. It's a lot of zombies. This room sucked. There are just so many zombies. I got lucky on my third try and was able to pick off Sir Rez a lot early on. Then I just picked them off one at a time. After cleansing the room of corpses, I prance on over to the puzzle brain, solve it way faster than I expected to, and slurp up some loot, an old Mind Flayer vintage, and space out while a mural talks to me. <laughs> Go ahead and listen to some brains talk through a severed head. This is a sentence that I just said. Make my way through a kid, a singer, and finally to the most overconfident severed head I've ever met. Over a set of hands to slap your face. And I've met three. Erase her mind for a permanent buff, even though I was truly tempted by the idea of ignoring her pleas and slurping up her mind like some warm noodles. Would that make the weird green liquid broth? I don't like this analogy. But I do like the idea of being a dick. The age-old dilemma. After my undead undertaking, I make my way over to some Merkle mobs, persuading this dumbass that I've been sent here to help. Yeah, me. The only human, other than you four in this entire underground flesh facility, was sent here alone to help you. For sure. So anyway, shoot them all in the back. Serves them right. Their fashion sense was just frankly appalling. Girl, your outfit is hilarious. Go fishing for some tadpoles and ponder the Mind Flayer pods. On one hand, pod purging is the easier thing to do, especially since I have killed everyone important that should be here. But easy is not the name of the game, my friends. So on my first attempt, I swear, the first one, I save the two remaining humans, then kill them in warm blood, as in... It got my blood pumping. They're cold, but I think that was obvious. It's finally time to make my way down to bully the big brain. So I ride the flesh elevator down. Eh, she ride my flesh elevator till I brain. Big brain. So this is the worst fight yet, which I honestly wasn't expecting considering how much of a relative cakewalk this whole act has been, but should have seen it coming. So I watch the shareholders meeting, someone bitches about the lack of growth in Ketherick sector, and they bring out the big brain to convert Mr. Politician into a corporate shill. See, in real life, they just use money, not headworms, but I digress. Anyway, the meeting adjourns, and they call me out for being a voyeur, and then Ketherick villain monologues while the girls stand back and enjoy the show. Wait, why are the girls there? Blah, blah, blah. I will kill you now. Actually, that was badass. And start the slog. Okay, after throwing myself at the wall, here's how I ended up beating this fight. Instead of walking directly into the cutscene, I sneak past and get behind the Mind Flayer, starting the fight with a sneak attack on him. It is also significantly easier if you don't gaslight Ketherick into committing poolicide. That way you can clear the room before he gets his glow down. So before starting the fight, I chug some blood, potion then some tried and true meth and i'm able to clear out all the brains and wait da dame alien you're just gonna fucking murder your own girlfriend like that holy shit isn't she like the love of your life that was savage also this was just really funny look at dame alien get dunked on by a single skeleton so much for an immortal paladin <laughs> so slay the skeletons and get ketherick to take a trust fall with his main man merkel Belongs to me. I am the smile of the worm clan stole. I am the regrets of those who remain. Bro, hurry the fuck up. I can see the sword back in me. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Lord of Odor. I. That one boss from Dark Souls. It is I, Grave Lord Nito. And here's the worst part of the fight. Mr. Skellyman frightens snipes you from anywhere on the map. Damn, what a fucking snipe. Sneaking doesn't work because he uses the AoE and then hits me with the scaredy beam, frightening my finicky ass every time and locking me in place. What I ended up doing here is stacking a buff or two for accuracy, hitting my man with some acid, and then hitting him with a tiny cloud of smoke. Bro, not only has no eyes, but is a fucking god. I feel like being unable to see through a foot of smoke is a pretty glaring weakness. But I'm not a god, so what do I know? But I am a god slayer. That's right, bitch! 
So watch Catherick put back on his flesh suit just to die. Again. Cut the sick stone out of his armor and... Holy shit! My dream girl came out of the relic! I'm so sorry, I'm filthy, I would have freshened up if I knew you were coming. Okay, so... Yeah, I saw the brain. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll stop him. Alright, I'll talk to you later, don't be a stranger. Dame Aelin has a cathartic skull crush sesh. And talks about how she misses her girlfriend. Who... She killed. Head on back to the towers for a party. That's right, boys. I killed a god. Wow. Killing everyone makes the post-god killing part a little lame. Just me, Withers, and Dame Aeland. And no, you can't hang out in my camp. Sorry. Wait, why are you here? I said not to come. I literally can't kill you. So, I mean, I guess she stays? Well, here's where I say goodbye. I'm heading off into Act 3 now, so subscribe if you want to see the rest. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.